We've learned about series circuits and parallel circuits. Now we are going to combine the two into series parallel circuits. Now we're going to get closer to real world circuits where we can have some fun and start learning about how to make things do something useful. And here is a circuit with both series and parallel elements. We have one battery, a 5K resistor, and then two 10K resistors. And what we need to do is identify which parts of the circuit are in series and which parts are in parallel and how those different parts interact with each other. So first, let's identify which part is which. So let's obscure this part of the circuit and we see that the other part, we have what looks like a series circuit, a battery and a resistor. And in here, there's only one possible current path. Now, if we obscure this part of the circuit, we see that we have what looks like a parallel circuit. We have a node and two current paths. So this part of the circuit is in parallel and this part of the circuit is in series. Now let's see how these two parts of the circuit interact with each other. First of all, these two resistors are in parallel, so they act like a single resistor that has less resistance than the lowest valued resistor. And we see that both of these resistors have the same resistance, they're both 10 ohms, so what is their resistance together? Together, they act like a 5 ohm resistor. But to help us look at how these interact, let's change the way I've drawn the circuit. So now I have the two 10 ohm resistors kind of zoomed out so that we see that they act together in the circuit. And we can see that these two 10 ohm resistors kind of act like they're in series with the 5 ohm resistor. In fact, let's uh, zoom out even a little more and we can see that the two 10 ohm resistors from a distance look like a single 5 ohm resistor. And now we just have a regular series circuit that follows all of the series circuit rules. So let's take a look at this circuit and see what we have. We have a 10 volt battery, 5 ohms, and 5 ohms, which means that half of our voltage is across this resistor and the other half of our voltage is across this resistor. So we have 5 volts here and 5 volts there, adding up to our total of 10 volts. And our total resistance is 10 ohms. We add the two resistors together, so a total of 10 ohms. And now we can calculate the current with 10 ohms and 10 volts, we will have one amp of current. Now we've zoomed back out a little bit and we can see these two individual resistors and together they're acting in parallel. And we now know that there is one amp of current. So what's going to happen here? Well, the amp of current is going to come through here and it's going to split up. So half an amp is going to go this way and half an amp is going to go this way. So each of these legs of the circuit has half of an amp or 0.5 amps flowing through it. And remember, these two resistors, when they were acting as one, we saw that it acts like a series circuit with five volts across this resistor and then five volts across this pair of resistors. So be careful, we do not have the entire 10 volts across this circuit. We're no longer a pure parallel circuit, so the voltage is no longer the same everywhere. But in this parallel part, it is the same everywhere here. So we have five volts and five volts. Where the other five volts go? Of course, they are here. So coming from the battery, we lose five volts across the first resistor. Then we have the rest of our 10 volts, the other five volts across the pair of other resistors, which are in parallel. There is how the voltage and currents get distributed. So let's confirm this by doing a little quick Ohm's law. We see half an amp and 10 ohms. We want to know our voltage, so we multiply. So 0.5 times 10 equals 5 volts. Same thing here, of course. So it all balances out. Now we're back to the original style. We have 10 volts, 5 ohms, two 10 ohm resistors in parallel, which together act as 5 ohms. So we have half of our voltage, 5 volts here, half of our voltage, 5 volts here. 5 volts across 10 ohms gives us half an amp. Same thing here, half an amp. So we have a total of one amp of current, and there's our total current, which circulates through the circuit. Here's a very similar circuit. I changed the numbers just to mix things up a little bit. We have 30 volts, again, five ohms. This time we have two 20 ohm resistors in parallel. So let's analyze this circuit. Once again, this half is in series. 
So we have a battery and a resistor, only one current path. This half is in parallel. We have two current paths. Let's analyze the circuit and see what it looks like. So, first of all, what is the total resistance of these two resistors together? Well, I made them equal resistors so we can do it quickly. 20 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms is going to be a total of 10 ohms. So now let's zoom out and see how this circuit looks if we take a wider view. So now we see that these two 20 ohm resistors are acting together like a single 10 ohm resistor. So now we have a series circuit with 5 ohms and 10 ohms. How is the voltage distributed here? Well, we have 10 ohms and 5 ohms, twice the resistance, therefore we'll have twice the voltage. And so what scenario will give us twice the voltage here than we have here, and those two voltages will add up to 30 volts. So we will have 20 volts across this resistor and 10 volts across this resistor. Does that work? 20 plus 10 is 30. This voltage is twice that voltage. It works out. Let's confirm that with Ohm's law. So what's our total resistance? We have 10 ohms plus 5 ohms. That's going to be 15 ohms. So let's divide that 15 ohms into our 30 volts to find our current, which is 2 amps. So 2 amps through 10 ohms. Multiply those together to get our voltage. 2 times 10 equals 20 volts. Same thing here. 2 amps through 5 ohms. Multiply them together. 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 volts, 20 volts. It all adds up. And now we'll start zooming back out to get back to our original drawing. Now we're back to the original way of drawing the circuit. And so we have 30 volts, 5 ohms, our two 20 ohm resistors in parallel. And once again, we do not have the entire 30 volts across these two resistors. The, re the voltage is no longer the same everywhere. I have a third of my voltage here and two thirds across these. But in the parallel part of the circuit, the voltage is the same everywhere in this part. So we have 20 volts and 20 volts. And if we look at the currents, well, it's, what do we have? We have two amps. We have two equal resistors. So we must have equal current going through them. So it's one amp each. Let's confirm that with Ohm's law. We have 20 volts across 20 ohms. 20 goes into 20, gives us one amp. Same thing over here. So it all balances out. This one's a little more complicated, but we can break it down into its series and parallel components and see how to work it. So we have a series circuit, only one possible current path. On this side, multiple paths, so it's a parallel circuit. But if we look at these two resistors, we see that there's only one current path between them, so they're in series again. So we have a series circuit, a parallel circuit, and a series circuit again. So let's work it out and see how this looks when we analyze it. These two resistors are in series, so together they have a total resistance of 10 ohms, plus 10 ohms equals 20 ohms. So now let's zoom out and see how these two resistors work together. So now we're actually back to the same circuit we had before. 5 ohms, 20 ohms, together they make 10 ohms. We have 1 amp of current here, 1 amp of current there, comes together for 2 amps, exactly the same circuit we had before. But let's zoom back in again and analyze what's going on here. First of all, we already determined that we start out with 30 volts and we lose 10, so we have 20 volts left across this part of the circuit. Now if we zoom in and split this resistor up, let's see what happens there. We have our 20 volts across both of those resistors, and so we have 10 volts across this one and 10 volts across that one. Let's zoom in a little further and put the configuration back the way we had it originally. Now we see as we move things around the corner that the 20 volts is across here, and across both of these resistors. So now, since we have 20 volts across both of them and they're equal resistors, that means we have 10 volts here and 10 volts here. So across this part of the circuit, we only have 10 volts with the other 10 volts here. So the circuit breaks down. We start with 30 volts. We lose 10 volts, leaving us with 20 volts across here. Then we lose another 10 volts here, leaving us with only 10 volts across there. 
let's see if everything still works. If it does, we determined before that there was one amp here and one amp here, giving us a total of two amps. Let's see if that still works. We have 10 ohms with 10 volts across it. So we divide our 10 volts by 10 ohms, giving us one amp. Or as we take both of these together, 20 ohms and 20 volts gives us one amp. So it still works out. And of course, 20 volts across 20 ohms gives us one amp. One amp plus one amp gives us two amps, and the circuit is still working as we expect. This one's a little complicated, but if we break it down into its individual parts, we can work it out. Don't be afraid to repeat parts of this video to make sure you understand each step of the way. So, taking a look at this, there's no clear shortcut, no place where I have two elements that I can work together to find the third uh, using Ohm's law. So we're going to have to go ahead and find the total resistance so we can calculate the total current. So let's get started. We have two 30 ohm resistors that are in series with each other. So there's only one current path between these two. They are in series. So together these two 30 ohm resistors will act like a single 60 ohm resistor. So now we have 20 ohms in parallel with 60 ohms, two current paths, so they're in parallel. 20 ohms in parallel with 60 ohms, 20 times 60 divided by 20 plus 60 gives us a total of 15 ohms for these two resistors. So together, these two resistors act like a single 15 ohm resistor. Now we have 15 ohms in series with 5 ohms, which gives us a total of 20 ohms of resistance for the whole circuit. Now we can calculate the total current. 20 ohms divides into 80 volts giving us four amps. Now let's zoom back in and put the circuit back the way it started. So now we know that we have four amps of current and that four amps will go through the first resistor, we'll split these two different ways and then come back to give us our four amps. Let's see how that splits. First of all, let's see how these two resistors work together. Once again, we have two 30 ohm resistors, so together they act like a single 60 ohm resistor. So we have 20 ohms in parallel with 60 ohms. So we have a 3 to 1 ratio. This resistor is three times that resistor, so it must have one third of the current. So what currents could we have here where this resistor has three times the current of that resistor and those add up to four amps? That would be three amps through the 20 ohm resistor and one amp through the 60 ohm resistor giving us a total of four amps. Now remember that these two resistors together are acting like 15 ohms. So let's double check these by checking the voltage across here and see if these add up. So we have 15 ohms and five ohms. How many ohms is that total? 20 ohms. So 15 and five, this is three quarters of our resistance and one quarter of our resistance. So we'll have three quarters of our voltage here and one quarter of our voltage there. So across here we will have 60 volts and then the other 20 volts is across the 5 ohm resistor. So with 60 volts across 20 ohms, 20 divides into 60 three times and here we have 60 divides into 60 one time. So we have 3 amps and 1 amp. So that does balance out. Now let's zoom back in and split these two resistors apart. And now we know that the 60 volts is across this resistor and across these two resistors together. So 60 volts from here to here, and we have two equal resistors. So if we start with 60 volts and we lose half of our voltage by the time we get to here, we have 30 volts left over. So we have 30 volts across our resistor here. So let's see if the numbers still add up. 30 volts, 30 ohms, divide 30 into 30, we get 1 amp, it still works. And we have 60 volts across the 20 ohms still, 20 divides into 60, giving us 3 amps. So the whole circuit still balances out, and now we've calculated the currents and the voltages across the circuit. So those are the essentials of series parallel circuits. Break down your circuit into its individual parts, where you have series parts and parallel parts, 
work those out, and then see how they work together as a single circuit. Be sure to watch the video on series parallel circuit exercises because it's very important that you understand these before we can move on into real-world electronic circuits. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.